Hi, I'm Baby Shark, and today we are going to be learning a little bit about the game of Warcraft 2. This map is called All You Need, and the positions are like a clock, so this here is 12 o'clock. So this is my happy little Warcraft village. I have my peons, I have my great hall, I have my farms, I have a barracks, I have two grunts, I have a blacksmith, and I'm going to go ahead and start upgrading my weapons in there. And I'm going to start sending some of my peons to find gold. And I'm low on farm, so I'm going to send one to make a farm. And one to chop. So everything's going along well in this village right now. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh no! The enemies are here to attack. And I'm defenseless. My grunts have been killed. And everybody's going to die. And this city is doomed. So, what do we need to learn to prevent this from happening? We need to learn how to wall in. So we can have a way to defend our village from the evil foe. So let's go take a look over here at the 11 o'clock position at a basic wall in. So this is a basic wall in. So we have, again, our little happy peons and farm and great hall. And we have two farms blocking off the only opening to this base. The rest of the base is surrounded by trees. So when we see the enemies coming to attack, we need to come and send some peons to repair those farms so they don't get through and kill everybody. So you can see that the guard tower is positioned a space away from the farms so that there's space for the peons to repair. That's very important. If your peons can't repair these farms, then there's a good chance that the farms are going to fall and that the enemies will get through. And as the runs start to die, then you can send your peons back to do other work because in a normal game you won't have that much resources and you'll need all of your resources to try to make, do other things like make more units, make more buildings, and so on. Um, because repairing costs money. It, it, it costs gold and lumber both, all the time. So every, every, time he, every time he strokes his axe, he spends one gold and one lumber over and over and over again. So it's quite costly, especially if you have multiple peons repairing those buildings. Um, so let's take a look at another type of wall -in. This is going to um, involve a bear axe. So you can make the unit um, axe thrower and you can make a catapult which can both attack units that are attacking your wall. You got me good. So we're being hit by a bunch of grunts here so I'm going to send one axer. Um, and I made another one so I have two axers. And we're going to go and repair that wall so that it doesn't die. And now the wall is going down faster than I'm repairing it. So if I have peons to repair with, that's great. I can come and send them. Or else you can make a ballista or a catapult, which can do more damage to the, to the attacking grunts than the axers. The axers are cheaper and faster to make, so they're good for an emergency and good for if the enemies that are attacking you are not too high leveled or too high in number. But if you have high leveled grunts and you have a lot of them, um, you're going to need a catapult. And sometimes you need to actually manually control the catapult to kill the grunts. Um, sometimes they, they hit on their own and sometimes they need to um, be co manually controlled. They're a bit temperamental that way. Uh, but yeah, the axers are faster and cheaper and the catapults take longer and cost more resources, um, but they hit for a lot more and they're kind of the standard if you want to wall in your base and go to power or go to fast lust or something to protect your base from gr enemy grunts and anything like that. Um, and yeah, once once you don't need them anymore, you want to bring your peons to do other work besides repairing. Um, but if unless you really need them to be repairing. All right, so we're going to look at another type of wall, which is a unit wall. Um, so we have a line up of grunts and we're going to select them all and press T, which is stand ground. That means that they won't move even if they're attacked. Normally they will, they will move and they'll pursue the enemy and so on and they'll break formation if they're not on stand ground. So stand ground makes them stay there, but they'll still fight if someone comes at them. Um, so this is good if you think you're outnumbered. 
Uh, and it also gives you a little bit of time to wall behind the unit wall um, to, give you some, to give you some time to figure out another way to defend your city. So you could make a guard tower behind these as you repair, or you could make, um, you could get an archer or a catapult. So the advantage of the unit wall is that the units on stand ground will be hitting first, and you'll be hitting three units at a time to hit one unit that comes into your wall at a time. So you have a little bit of an advantage that way. Now he had he was level five, and I was only level I was level two. So my grunts died really quickly because I forgot to upgrade the levels. But that's a unit wall. All right. So now looking at position six here. Um, this is one way to do a choke. So a choke is basically you have units set up so that they you'll attack one unit that can fit in this little tunnel with three units at a time. So it's a good way to defend. So you have to remember to select the units that are a part of the choke and press T so that they're on stand ground. And then the other units behind them will not be on T so that they will step forward to take the place of any that die. So if you look here, these three grunts are going to be killing quite a few of the grunts that come into the choke, and none of them have died so far, even though the, the grunts that are coming in are a higher level. They're level 5, and the grunts that are part of the choke are level 3. Okay, so one, one died, but he lost all of them. So that's a, a good way to to defend your base, if, especially if you have a smaller number of grunts and it's an emergency and you don't want them to get in and kill you. Um, the weakness of this type of um, of this type of setup is that they can reverse choke you on the outside of your buildings. So, so if he sets up like this, then they can be attacking these buildings and keep you from getting out of your base. So that's a weakness to be aware of, and you can prevent this from happening if you have an archer or a catapult or a guard tower or a cannon tower that gives you some range to attack with, also on the inside supporting that choke. So that is your basic choke. And you can also have a, a tunnel of two or a tunnel of three, um, and you just then need a few more grunts. So the, the idea is that you have more grunts hitting their grunts that can fit in the tunnel than they have hitting yours. So that gives your grunts the advantage. Um, so now when you go, we'll take a look here at the most powerful type of wall. Normally you would probably be able to only afford one cannon tower. Um, here I have set up two, because if you have the resources for it and you know the enemy has um, lost in magic, then it might be good to have two if you if you have the resources to allow for it. Um, so this, is, this should withhold even against lust, which is going to be um, common in late game. So we want to get these peons to repair right away as soon as we see the attack happen, and then we can use the death knights to also decay the enemies on the outside. So this is what you'll want to use for your expansions when you're playing late game and you make an expansion. And again, as soon as the peons are not needed, then you can send them to do other work besides repairing. Um, now we're going to go over to 3 and take a look at what a weak wall-in looks like. So this is an example of a weak wall-in. Um, the reason why it's a weak wall-in is because you only have two peons here that can repair this building, and it can be attacked by seven grunts. So that means the peons won't be able to repair it fast enough, and that building is going to fall. And there's not going to be enough time to make a guard tower or a cannon tower or axe or catapult. Um, in order to protect from this building falling. And even if you can re-wall, you still have the disadvantage in that you've lost your barracks. You don't want to be losing your buildings, because then you lose the ability to, pr to produce some um, enemy units. I mean, your units that are going to be enemies to your enemy. Um, so you want to really quickly re-wall if that happens. 
and then come and repair this wall and then try to make a tower behind behind this and you want to keep a keep an eye on the health bar of your building so if you see that it's staying pretty stable like it is right now then you think okay i probably have enough peons but now it's going down and down and down so you want to put more peons on it so you can do an axer for an emergency like this because the cannon tower might not be ready in time and this building is in the red so the axer is going to get started helping to dismember these grunts and get rid of them um, while you're catapult and or if, if you do end up making a catapult that's another option um, while your cannon tower finishes so now now this now this is secure they're not going to be able to not, not uh, to knock down either of these buildings and they're all going to die if they stay now if you're facing a good player they're going to withdraw their grunts so they don't die and then they're going to get a catapult and use the grunts to defend the catapult and then so you'll need either a catapult or a magic or something to go kill their catapult with um, so yeah, there's a lot of strategy involved in this game and it's just really fun, so you should definitely try it out. Thanks for watching!